Welcome back to Locked On Spurs on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Kens 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Hey, it is the offseason. And although, yeah, it's going to be a very long time until we get some Spurs basketball back on that court. Uh, one of the good things about the offseason is that we're going to have some fun, dive into different topics that we don't get to get into during the regular season. And we're going to do exactly that today. There's a lot of Spurs fans that enjoy basketball cards, whether it be the cards they grew up with, you know, um, picking them up at the convenience store, put them in their sleeves and their binders till today, where now it's become a very, very lucrative thing to do if you do it right. We're going to be talking about all things basketball cards on this episode of Lockdown Spurs, but specifically San Antonio Spurs cards. What should you be looking for? Are there any hidden gems? Uh, we have a guest who is all about that arena, basketball cards. He is a longtime Spurs fan and a big card collector, and he puts on the event in San Antonio twice a month where you can go and exchange, trade, buy new basketball cards, and he'll tell you all about that in just a minute. Let's go to welcome Josh Cook. Josh, welcome to Lockdown Spurs. Hey, Jeff. Glad to be here. Glad to be talking about uh, my passion, uh, collecting cards of all kinds. And of course, you know, living in San Antonio and calling San Antonio home, home of the 210, home of the world champion, San Antonio Spurs. Right, man. Uh, go Spurs, go. Truth be told, everybody, I go to Josh every time I have basketball question, uh, basketball card questions. Um, you know, I, I'm like maybe grade school level. He is like master... 10th degree black belt in this arena. He knows his stuff. Uh, Josh, again, we appreciate your time. Uh, You know, it is kind of one of those things where when you get talking on social media about basketball cards, a lot of fans kind of jump in. They start talking about it. There's a, there's an interest in this, in this, uh, this arena, isn't there? Yeah, there's a huge, huge collector market and it's gotten a lot bigger over the last few years. The hobby itself, uh, you know, I got in back in the, the eighties, Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it waxes and wanes, you know, with any, um, you know, kind of hobby. Um, but, uh, we've seen pick up over the last three to four years, I would say, and the, the market's booming uh, a lot of collectors. I yeah. see a lot of young kids out there as well that, um, you know, their parents take them out to the, the card shows. Uh, it's great to see the kids out there bringing up a whole new generation of, of collectors. Now, before I forget, uh, make sure to follow Josh on Twitter at Joshua R. Cook. If you have a basketball card collection, that would be about the Spurs just in general. Or if you have a collection that maybe you might think is worth something, or you may want to wheel and deal with him, again, on Twitter, at Joshua R. Cook. Now, you, let's go to dive into this. Um, you kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, how did you get into cards? You know, Was that something that you discovered late in life, or it was kind of one of the things like you started doing as a kid and you just never left it? Yeah, I remember um, you know, as a kid, uh, back in the 80s, my brother and I uh, – Shout out Chris Cook, um, chef extraordinaire here in San Antonio. Um, used to run around and collect cards. We used to go down to the local convenience store and, and pick up a pack of, uh, of cards back in the 80s. And, you know, our collections grew and we got excited about various players and, and have all sorts of fun. In fact, he was, the, he was the first card collection that I ever, I bought him out. Jeff mm-hmm. and uh, you know he still had he had some treasures in there that uh, you know I've eventually sent off to grading and um, you know they're they're worth some decent cash. I always I always looked at the hobby as a you know a collector first and then you know an investor mm-hmm. and and a uh, a dealer now um, so yeah. that I can share cards and uh, experience the hobby with uh, other folks. This makes this very clear, everybody. Uh, Josh is not just some guy, you know, a fan who um, has a bunch of cards. You know, he's he, he knows his stuff. He knows what he's talking about. Um, and he'll definitely talk about his event, uh, the uh, card showcase event that he puts on twice a month in San Antonio. Uh, I'm still looking forward to going for my first time. I, I'm, I'm, I'm eager to go and meet you, Josh, and uh, see what you got on that table. Let's, let's go and dive further into this now. So, you know, when, you know, when Spurs fans look at the basketball cards, you know, they got their stash at home probably, you know, but what should Spurs fans be looking for in cards? Is it just simply, oh, I got this card and we're done? I think it's beyond just that, isn't it? Yeah, it it absolutely is. Jeff, uh, just real quick on the the monthly events, 
um, those aren't my events, just for clarity okay. purposes. Those are run by a, a group, uh, San Antonio Collectors Expo. Okay. Um, so I don't want to mislead your audience of thinking that I'm I'm running it. I'm not. Hey, well, um, we've got I, we got to get people over there to go visit your booth, though. So, so oh yeah, so we, we got to get everybody there. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> uh, hold that thought. We'll def we'll definitely be breaking down the details of okay. how um, fans can go and meet you at your booth at the uh, at the convention. Uh, but yeah, it, again, you know, it's not just simply. Oh, I got. I'm making this up. David Robinson's rookie card. I'm done. I'm finished. Right? It's it's more than that, isn't it? What's your no, first thing we're looking for in cards? Yeah. So that's the beauty of collecting, right? Um, it's not just player, um, but the player has you know tons of cards that you can collect. Um, different. It's really pieces of art um, that you're mm -hmm. collecting. Uh, if you look at some of the designs, some of the graphics, some of the the photography that's uh, involved. I mean, they're, they're beautiful pieces of art in many cases. Um, and, and many of them are, are also serial numbered. So it's not, you know, mass produced. Um, you know, these are, you know, serial numbered to, you know, five, 10, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 50 or 100. Um, so you really feel like you've got something special that uh, really nobody else has. Um, and then, you know, you can go player, you can go team, uh, various years, um, even throwbacks. Um, so there's there's a ton to uh, to to collect out there, and it's just you know it's your personal passion of of what you'd like to see, um, and so you can take it in a number of different directions. It's really a right. lifelong kind of hobby that you can pick up. You know, one of the things that I always think about when you know, people talk to me about cards on social media is like kind of the basics. You know, well, yeah, you can have a Robinson rookie card, but you know, is it chewed up by the pet? Is it been stepped on a few times? <laughs> is it frayed? You know, how, you know, when, when we'll talk about this in a few minutes, but you know, how mint does a card need to be for it to really have a, a, a good value? Is that kind of a starting point? Uh, kind of, it depends on first, you know, the age of the card, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, the stuff that's being produced, um, you know, these days or even the last like 10 years or so should be in really good condition um, to be sent in for grading and get a high grade and, and to be worth something. Uh, of course, you, you want, uh, you know, pristine corners and edges and surface um, and good centering mm -hmm. with the photography that's that's on there. Um, it, as the cards get older, uh, it, you know, it's uh, it's a little bit more difficult to, um, you know, to have something in a pristine condition. Uh, you know, they get tossed sure. in a drawer, they're not mm -hmm. handled properly, or, you know, kids get a hold of them or pets. Um, so th there's, a, you know, th there's there's fewer, and which makes them more valuable, of cards um, that are older that are in that, uh, that gem mint condition that uh, we all strive for as mm -hmm. collectors. You know, there's probably Spurs fans listening to right now, and like they're probably chomping at the bed. You know, is this lucrative? You know, uh, how... You know, how lucrative can this be? You know, how important is grading? Can you talk about that? How key is getting cards graded that you feel, you know, or, you know, an owner, you know, feels that it's worthy enough to go that extra step? And how lucrative can this be? How, how lucrative can collecting basketball cards or just cards in general be? So you can talk about grading and, and lucrativeness in this arena. Sure. Um Grading, you know, it's it's personal uh, opinion of, you know, what should go out to grading. Now, I look at it from a from a collector standpoint, and I, I think, wow, I, you know, I really I really love this car. I really love this player. Uh, you know, uh, Tim Duncan rookies, for example. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I'd love to have those in my personal collection um, because he's an awesome player, and you know, it's a it's a lifelong um, love for the San Antonio Spurs. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to find some that are, you know, decent value and I'm going to send them off. And, and because they are mine and I've collected them myself, I probably pulled them from a pack. Uh, I, I care about those and um, getting them graded is more of a um, treating it as like a historical artifact. And that's, that's my mm -hmm. personal collection that it won't go anywhere else. And so I don't mind spending money on grading. And, you know, if it doesn't come back a, a gem mint 10, um, then that's okay. It's it's still mine, and 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 that's all right. Uh, you know, of course, you want the higher grades, but but that's okay. If I'm looking at it from uh, you know an investor standpoint, then yeah, I want the higher grade. I want the mm. 
uh, the low serial number, the low population count of uh, of the card, so that it's um, you know it's going to rise in value over the years. Um, if I'm looking at it from a, a a dealer standpoint, I've got to cover grading fees and I've got to cover the the cost of the card, and so I, I want to mm-hmm. look at it from a, hey, what's my return on investment? And mm-hmm. if I can, if I can do three X or five X on a card or even more, then yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sending that, I'm sending those cards into grading immediately. And, uh, you know, they'll show up at my booth and you can come buy them. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's the lucrativeness of it. You know, yeah. if you get your hands on some cards or you, um, you do some analysis and you think that a player is on the rise and you want to make a strategic investment. Um, then, you know, you go out and you, you get the, the, you buy the raw cards, um, you make mm-hmm. sure they look good, you send them off to grading and, and what was a, you know, a 100 or $200 investment, uh, suddenly becomes when it comes back from grading a card worth a thousand or $2,000. So wow. there's, there's a, there's a 10 X or, or, or more, uh, involved in it. If you, if you know what you're doing, um, mm-hmm. you know, some of them, some of crap shoots though, you know, you think that a rookie is going to be hot and they, they turn out to, to not be, um, all of a sudden you've got uh, too many cars that you're sitting on and I bet. Uh, not, yeah. not worth a whole lot of money. You, you were saying uh, some terms here and, uh, we're going to pretend like the audience has no idea about this, um, this area. You're talking about 10, uh, mint on cars, stuff like that. What are, what are some of the key phrases that Spurs fans Locked on Spurs listeners uh, should be keen on if they're going through their Spurs basketball card collection and thinking about grading. You know, what are the buzzwords that you want to yeah. hear back? Yeah, yeah. Chances are you've got a bunch of what's called raw cards. That means they're not mm-hmm. they're not graded. They're in your your shoebox or your binder or something like that. Um, you you want to pay close attention to the condition of those and uh, centering is is key on them. Uh, the edge wear, um, the corner wear. Uh, to make sure that the cards are are in good condition. And then if you send them off to grading, you're looking at a grading scale of um, literally like authentic or um, a one Mm -hmm. um, poor, poor condition um, to a 10 gem mint. Like that thing is, uh, is essentially Mm -hmm. flawless, you know, the centering great on the corners are great on the edges are great on it. Everything's um, is beautiful. Um, And and that's the way it'll come back as a, as a 10, hopefully. How rare is it to um, when you send it off to grading to get it back at ten? Is that pretty rare to get that type of results? Um, no, I, I wouldn't say it's it's rare. I mean, you have to you know know what you're doing and and pick the right mm-hmm. cards to begin with. And um, some of it is is subjective, right? There's humans mm-hmm. in the loop. There's there's talks about you know uh, enhancing the automation or inclusion of things like artificial intelligence. Uh, to mm-hmm. enhance the grading process, but there's humans in the loop. So, you know, what you think and what you've, you know, looked at with a magnifying glass and overhead lights to think is a great card in great condition. Uh, somebody else um, may, may not think that. And so, it, you know, it comes back a nine instead of a 10, for example, or you miss something and right. you think, you think that, uh, you know, everything's good, but you know, there was a print line on the card mm-hmm. that you didn't or you know some sort of uh, surface blemish or dimple or something mm-hmm. like that. It, it, is it is it kind of standard? Let's just say you get it back and maybe they, you know, it's I'm we're gonna just give like a, kind of a a wild example here. Like clearly it's it's a rated uh, a graded nine or a ten, but for some reason it comes back like a five or a four. Our, our uh, I guess are you allowed to return it, so to speak, and get it reevaluated? Yeah, there's you know there's a process for that. It's not it's not easy. Okay, um, but uh, you know most folks will say, yeah, you know what, maybe I missed something. They'll exam you can mm-hmm. examine your card, and if you really feel like, hey, you know what, the whoever was great and you know did a bum job. Um, there's recourse. Uh, you can within a, a time frame, you can you know file a, a uh, a form with the grading company mm. and say, Hey, uh, we think we got this one wrong. And you know, you'll have to send it back in and go through the gotcha. process again. 
We're talking with Joshua Cook right here on Locked On Spurs. He is our go-to guy when it comes to all things Spurs basketball cards, basketball cards in general, just sports cards as well. But before we continue, I want to talk to you about sunglasses, not just any sunglasses, Shady Ray sunglasses. Shady Ray is an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of $200 Sunglasses for a fraction of the price. That means polarized lenses, well-constructed durable frames, and premium high-end finishes. Also, something you don't find anywhere else is Shady Ray's insane protection program. Shady Ray's includes lost and broken protection on every pair. They will send you a brand new pair. If you lose them, no matter what happened, I urge you to give them a try. And if you don't love them, you'll pay nothing. Simple as that. And they go the extra mile. 10 meals are donated to fight hunger in America when you shop with Shady Rays. Yeah, they really go above and beyond. Exclusively for our listeners, head to ShadyRays.com. Use code LOCKEDON to get 50% off two or more pairs of polarized sunglasses. That's code LOCKEDON for their best deal of the season. 50% off two or more pairs of Shady Ray sunglasses. And by the way, it's backed by over 150,000 verified five-star reviews we're back with josh cook right here on this episode of locked on spurs and he is uh so you know you is it okay to call you a guru in this arena this basketball card arena yeah absolutely all right he is our go he is our go-to guy he is my go-to guy whenever i do have questions and josh is really good about responding to you make sure to give him a follow if you have basketball card questions at joshua r cook on twitter let's continue our talk and start diving into more spurs focused cards here now um you know do you own any spurs cards that are worth a lot and which players uh, are those <laughs> yeah yeah I've, uh you know you gotta you gotta have uh you know some of the the spurs players in your your personal collection yeah, I've, I've got um, plenty of Duncans. You know, he's he's the greatest. He's the man, um, the goat. Um, uh, you know, I've got plenty of um, of Manu, and as he's mm-hmm. joined the hall, we've seen some rises in some of his prices for some of his rookie cards. Um, yeah, of course, you know, you got Tony. He's going into the hall next year, um, yep. first time guy a- as well, and so. You know, you got to have um, plenty for the the local fans that are going to be wanting those those cards. Um, so yeah, but definitely have um, definitely have uh, the the big three there. In fact, I, I picked up mm-hmm. a, a a patch card of you know a patch is called uh, uh, that because they've got uh, jerseys or uniforms of the player game worn mm-hmm. um, uh, artifacts on a card that's coming to me mm-hmm. uh, this week. That's got uh, all three. Duncan, uh, Ginobili, and and Parker. So that's uh, that's gonna wow. be cool. I think it's serial numbered out of four or something like that. Um, wow. But yeah, yeah, definitely have to have plenty of Spurs in the the personal collection. As far as um, you know, higher price ones. Um, let's see. I, I think I've got some cards that are probably worth um, you know five hundred, six hundred dollars for for Spurs nice. players. Yeah. Yeah. Like who, and, and those are the big three players that usually yeah. are in that uh, upper uh, level of price. Yeah, rookie uh, rookie cards are mm-hmm. high end. I mean, there's a variety of different types of cards and brands of cards, and and some of the higher end uh, brands, um, especially if they're they're low serial numbered, so there's not issued a whole bunch of them. Um, and they have things like autographs or they have things like jerseys mm-hmm. and in, incorporated into the card, then those are, those are going to be the worth uh, more money. You know, looking further back, you know, a Robinson's, uh, Gervin's, I mean, I don't know how far, you know, basketball, basketball cards, NBA basketball cards go, but what about old timey cards like that? You know, your, your Sean Elliott's your David Robinson, hall of famer, quad double guy, Iceman, you know, legend. You know, are those older cards worth anything? I know I, I watched a documentary about the basketball card award, and supposedly, like in the in the Robinson era, the early '90s, that was kind of a, a bad period of basketball cards. Is that true? Well, you know, generally speaking, you know, the, if you want to go um, collect, then you want to, you know, go for Hall of Famers, go for rookie Hall of Famers, or rookie cards of Hall of Famers, um, and. Um, 
you know, good, great condition cards and ideally cards that have been graded. So, I mean, that's kind of a general rule of thumb and, mm -hmm. and that spans, you know, current day to, um, you know, more vintage uh, cards. And uh, so you can absolutely go and you can get out there and you can collect some, uh, you know, some Iceman uh, autographs. Uh, they're, they're floating around out there. They're, they're pretty cool. Um, as well as, you know, some I see what you did there, Josh. Players. Pretty cool. Iceman. Pretty cool. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Iceberg Slim, but, man. I think that's my favorite nickname for for the Iceman. Iceberg. <laughs> yeah, that, that that sounds pretty good. But no, but um, I'm pretty sure you know there, there's you know a lot of Spurs fans out there that have a collection and they probably forgot about it. They know where it is, but they just forgot what's in it, and they're probably sitting on something there. Um, you know, no, you just let's, you, you're talking about earlier on the show about how. Now, like now, 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 you really want to be mindful about the cards you're getting, you know, whether it be a Zion, whether it be, you know, who knows, you know, Bonchero that's coming in. And, you know, you mentioned Monica Ginobili. You've seen a spike in his value going into the Hall of Fame. Tony Parker is another one. Are there are there any, you know, Spurs player cards that are on the roster right now? You know, your Devin Vassells, your Primos, Keldon, DeJounte, Jakob, you know, are there – what? current player cards would you say Spurs fans should get and why all of them and did you all mention somebody did you mention somebody named Zion Zion who <laughs> yeah when was the last time he played <laughs> yeah I'm not uh, not familiar with this guy by the way quick quick aside has his card plummeted yeah yeah we it saw it, it was he was he was the hot rookie you know must have and yeah. the the population count. So when you send off to grading, it, um, it, it gets tracked, right. And it becomes mm -hmm. known as the population count of that card. Uh, his population counts were through the roof. Like everybody and their mother was sending cards off yeah. of Zion. Um, and then, you know, he started, you know, not playing, getting hurt, whatever. And, um, you know, I hope he feels better. Um, but, uh, you, we saw the, the prices cause he wasn't playing. Um, mm -hmm. you know, his, his prices were going down. And then on top of that, the population count was through the roof. So everybody had mm -hmm. one. Um, uh, yeah. so yeah, it really hurt his, his hobby. I mean, for the higher end cards, you know, they're still worth a lot of money. I mean, don't get mm -hmm. me wrong. Um, but the run of the mill, um, you know, card that, you know, anybody can, can pick up had, had dropped significantly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we well, still see that, like records, records being broken. Right. Um, yeah, I know. I mean, end over end. I, I, I love it when you tag me on things to show me like, look at this, look at this, look at this. You know, I'm like, whoa, I mean, this is out of control. I think I even asked you uh, a couple months back about um, for a t the highest ever sold Tim Duncan rookie card. You know, it broke a record for Tim Duncan cards. And yeah, like yeah. how you explained it to me, you know, like, well, well, because it's a, it's, well, I think it was a metallic. I think that's what it was. It was a green metallic one. Uh, precious metal gems. I mean, that's precious a, metal one. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so like 1997, it's Duncan's rookie. It's um, precious metal gem, which is a highly sought after uh, card to begin with. And then there's only 10 of them. Um, and it's a beautiful, like, you know, it's a, it's a piece of art. Um, mm -hmm. So there's only 10 in the world. And uh, I think that was graded like an eight five or something like that, eight point five. Wow. Um, wow. And so yeah, I w it, it ended up going for like a few hundred thousand dollars. It was um, it was wow. amazing. But circling back to the current crop of Spurs fans on the, on the uh, I'm sorry, the Spurs players, excuse me, on the roster right now, you said get them all right now. You know whether that had been a Jakob or, or Vassell or Primo or Trey Jones. You know why? Why did you give that answer? Why you? Why? Why would you urge Spurs fans that are looking getting into the basketball card? Uh, business or hobby and they obviously it, want to get their spurs you know like wh yeah. why why say all of them yeah it's it's what we all know as san antonio spurs fans um but the rest of the the nba and the collector community doesn't quite hadn't quite caught on yet um we're the hidden gem we we've got a, a solid program under coach pop that is known for developing talent and we're in a, a small market and that works to our advantage. Um, so you get young talent like Josh Primo, young kid, right? 18, 19 years old now, got a long future, uh, you know, a great career ahead of him. So you get in from the ground floor um, and you, you watch him develop. It'll take a little bit. I mean, this is the, this is the um, investment side of, of the business. Um, but you get his rookie cards right now. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you get uh, Devin Vassell, and those cards are still fairly uh, cheap. I mean, you can get you know autographs and, and jersey cards for a couple hundred bucks. Um, mm. That's you know cheap, relatively speaking. I know not everybody considers that cheap, and um, you know there's certainly cards that are um, you know a lot more affordable um, than those. Uh, mm-hmm. of those players but they'll over time you know they'll they'll rise because the you know as the program rebuilds and you've got all this young talent and they start to gel mm-hmm. um you'll see the the market catch on uh, we saw mm-hmm. something similar with uh Keldon um you know a couple mm-hmm. years back um, when he was first on the scene uh, everybody knew that he was going to be a talent he's a generational type player um and uh so a bunch of bunch of investment went into him, and we're still seeing that market uh, a lot of upside to to that market as well as a bunch of other Spurs players. So it's um, it's great to be a Spurs mm-hmm. fan, and it's, it's great to be collecting Spurs Spurs cards. Yeah, exactly. We're here with Josh Cook, and he's talking to us everything about Spurs basketball cards, basketball cards in general, and just the hobby as well. Before we continue, I want to talk to you about Built Bar. Built Bar will put you back on that New Year's resolution. You know, the one you said, you know, you're going to get in shape. Well, Built Bar will help you accomplish that goal. It almost feels like you're not really eating a healthy bar because it tastes like candy, but they are so good for you. Um, Look, they got a new puff. It's basically just protein infused marshmallow. And they come in different flavors, a churro flavor, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. They're very, very good. They're going to be your delicious uh, next favorite flavor when you go to Built.com. And by the way, they're covered in 100% chocolate. They're just like a treat. All Built bars, like I said, are covered in 100% chocolate, even the puffs. Yes, 100% real chocolate. Low calorie, high protein. Replace your candy bars with these. They're better. Typical candy bar can be anywhere between two to 300 calories. You don't want that in your system. Go to built.com right now. Scroll down to the macros chart. You'll be blown away. High protein, low cal, high fiber, low carb. Just for example, most built bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. That's right. And they taste delicious. Trust me, I know. I go through boxes of them uh, almost monthly. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, white chocolate cookies and cream. They are all delicious. New flavors are coming out all the time. You will find your favorite when you go to Built.com, and they're good for you. At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. And, yeah, they pull it off every time. Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15. Get 50% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. We are back with Josh Cook right here on this episode of Locked On Spurs, where we're talking everything about Spurs basketball cards, which players you should be focusing on. He says all of them. So start getting out to the hobby store, the convention that he's going to talk about in a few minutes and pick up your next Spurs basketball uh, card. And maybe it is that rare find that you'll find at his booth. And uh, yeah, Josh knows everything when it comes to basketball cards. Let's going to start wrapping this up. We're hitting up against the clock here, Josh. Uh, you know, I want to talk to you a little bit more just, again, Spurs-focused cards. Uh, are San Antonio Spurs cards historically some of the more valuable cards? Can you hear about the Jordan and the Bulls and the Lakers and all this stuff? Where do Spurs cards usually value? What, are they, what do they rank among, you know, cards that are must-gets? Uh, you know, Jordan, you know, He's, he's the goat, right? Um, yeah. So he's always going to be, you know, a, a, have a, a strong market. Um, you know, you've got um, you've got Duncan and uh, Robinson mainstays in in the card market. Mm. You can always you can always find those cards, and they're always going to be valuable. And um, you know, with the Hall and uh, you know the increased emphasis on what Manu and, and Tony have brought to. Um, not only San Antonio, but to the NBA writ large, I think um, they're getting more recognition of um, their talent. I mean, mm-hmm. certainly with the world championships um, that the, the city has won, um, they were in the limelight. Um, their their hobby mm-hmm. market is strong and it's getting stronger. Um, so, I mean, they're competitive across, you know, if you look at franchises, uh, you know, we've got um, a, a lot of strong players that, um, that resonates inside the the card collecting community. So I think we're in a good position across the board. 
I gotta ask you this question. This is probably where a lot of Spurs fans are gonna like hang up on us, but I gotta ask. Kawhi Leonard Spurs cards, are they valuable? Burn them on site. That's a <laughs> that's, that's an open that's an open Not, invitation. Even a Kawhi Leonard rookie Spurs card, would you burn that on site? No, I I wouldn't touch it. Um no, that's just <laughs> That's just me being a, a pure San Antonio fan right there. Right. Um, I, I don't, I don't have any Kawhi cards, uh, not interested in them. Uh, I, in fact, I don't even see those things really floating around the, the local card market here. Oh, wow. um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's just bad juju right but, there. But, 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 but let's just remove your Spurs fan cap right now and just put back on the, uh, Josh cook business card man hat on. Um, is a Spurs Kawhi Leonard rookie card something sought after by collectors, or is it because his his history with health recently is his card is declining? Um, you're absolutely right. I mean, his his cards have declined. Um, they they were you know fairly uh, valuable, um, but uh, you know he's not playing, yeah. and uh, you know it's for this reason that reason. Um, so you know if you're not playing, you're not getting minutes, then you know the the hobby kind of loses sight of you. Okay, I can imagine. Um, uh, just off the top of your head, and this is probably you know an obvious answer, but do you know which is the all-time most valuable Spurs card ever to own? Is it a Robinson? Is it a Duncan? Is it going to be maybe Manu when he goes to the Hall? You know, w- which is the all-time most valuable Spurs basketball card? Um, good question. You know, I, I think that it's probably going to be that Duncan um, precious metal gems. Uh, that's, that's got to be up there for a while. Um, you know, it, it pulled in, I think it was like a quarter of a million. Yeah. Uh, that was somewhere, I wrote about it at Ken's that. five. I wrote about and, it at Ken's five, Josh, and get this. I had the news producer uh, reach, uh, email me, basically my boss, uh, wanting more information because they actually ran a story about it on the news. Fantastic. You, yeah. you know, getting the word out. I mean, that's that's a valuable card. Um, they have Logo Man, um, where it's the NBA logo mm-hmm. um, associated with a card and an autograph, usually, of a player. Um, and I think those those will probably rival it. But I think between those two, either Precious Metal Gems or something like a Flawless or National Treasure Logo Man, um, with an auto of like Duncan, I think that, mm-hmm. I think that would be, you know, pretty competitive. Wow. So yeah. So that's, yeah. that's the caliber so, we're talking about. Start digging through your collection, Spurs fans. You might be sitting on something very, very, very rare and valuable. And who knows, maybe Josh can help you out there before I turn the mic over to you. You tell us all about the convention uh, where you have your booth and everything. Uh, for a minute there, Josh, I thought you were going to tell me the most valuable Spurs car ever was a rookie Luka Samanich, right? That was going to be it. No, no. no. <laughs> you know, I've got I've got a a, a rookie Luka that's like numbered to five. Like, meaning there's only like five in existence, and you yeah. know, he was still kind of up and you know coming up in the system. And I was like, man, this thing might be worth something. And then you know, get traded and all yeah, that. Like, oh, he's man. out of the league now. It's it's not moving anywhere. <laughs> yeah, you can't imagine. Uh, tell us about the convention uh, for the folks in San Antonio that want to go meet you, that want to talk basketball cards with you, maybe buy something off your booth. Tell us all the details that we need to know. Well, first and foremost, it's it's family friendly. Anything in the hobby. Um, these events that I'm about to mention, uh, they're all family friendly. So bring the kids out. I have, uh, you know, my, uh, I got a couple of young daughters and I get them involved in the hobby. And um, so it, it's a fun family uh, time and we, lo- we love to see families there. And, and probably, um, you know, you'll, you'll get some freebies just because the kids are coming through. We love to see kids um, running around. Um, so there's a there's a monthly show. Um, it's down on North St. Mary's at uh, the Herman Brothers uh, building, if you're familiar with that area of town, mm-hmm. um, that you can go and attend. Um, it's held um, you, on Saturdays, um, and it's usually the middle of the month. Um, you can go to SACOLLExpo.com for more information about the next event. Um, so S A C O L L expo dot com um, for the the quarterly, and so that's April thirtieth and May first. It's a two day show. It's at the Shrine Auditorium, 
10 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's where you're going to have probably about 80 plus vendors. Um, and if you've got collectibles that you want to get authenticated, like you've got some uh, some autographs and you're not sure if uh, you know mm -hmm. it was the if it was Iceman or Duncan um, or Robinson signing something, you can go get it checked out the, for auth uh, autograph authentication. Um, mm -hmm. We'll be there through a reputable JSA source. Um, free parking. Um, there's going to be food there, door prizes, all that great stuff. Comics, toys, um, awesome. sports cards, Pokemon. Everything. We've got it all. Man, that's like heaven for me. Yeah, look, I, I, yeah. If Josh, you, supposed to, you need to come join my booth, I need, man. I need to go join your booth, collectibles. Man. And yeah, I want to. I want to see the collectibles. You know, you, we've been talking about it, but I want to see you <laughs> out there with you. My collection and, is, it should be, should be in a museum. Uh, that's where it should be. It's it's out of control. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but thanks for the offer too. I appreciate that you're going to share the booth with me, so we both can you know meet people yeah. and maybe sell some stuff there. That, that's part of the fun right there. You know, you'll yeah. meet all sorts of people and you, you hear all sorts of hobby stories and it's great. It's great. You know, there's one, Jeff, there's one uh, thing that I've missing in my, in my collection. What's I've that? been trying my hardest to get it is a, a Spurs Coyote autograph card. I don't wow. have one yet. I, I would love one. Shake hands with the Coyote, get a, uh, you know, a rare 101 uh, paw print <laughs> or autograph yeah that would that would make my day you know he he for the first time ever in his history he quote unquote spoke at the last home game i put that in quotes because all he did was just use like a voice synthesizer to answer questions like yes no maybe like that and it was like a big to do <laughs> so if he's already t talking quote unquote maybe he'll start writing uh some autographs for you josh um There's by the way i think uh yeah, I think your your brother is also, you know, he has something else uh, cooking as well, you know. Yeah, so um, yeah, my, my brother's, yeah, hey, thanks, Jeff. My my brother's, a, you know, a classically trained chef and uh, has helped out with um, many of the the food uh, options that you see at uh, AT&T Center or, you know, the um, the soccer clubs, uh, you know, especially the one up uh, up the road in Austin. Um, but he, his main focus is um, his tea. He's got a uh, an olive leaf tea that's sourced locally, um, that's healthy for you. So not, uh, you know, not one of those mm -hmm. sugary, sugary drinks. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's called Special Leaf Tea. Um, so shout out to him and uh, Special Leaf. Uh, it's it's great for you and um, it tastes great as as well. And he can be found in boutique shops and farmers markets around the the local community. So feel free to to say hello to. Uh, to him and uh, try out a tasty beverage at Special Leaf Tea. So basically, anybody can just Google Special Leaf Tea and they can find the website. Simple as that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Or do you want to and he'll, he'll deliver for free you or, you know, you can find it around town. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. You know, we cannot thank Josh enough for coming on this episode of Lockdown Spurs to give us kind of a, a crash course in basketball cards what you'd be looking for you know uh, some some spurs player cards that maybe you might have and he gave you details on how to catch up with him at the uh card convention that uh is another one's coming up very very soon so if you want more information uh make sure to follow him on twitter at joshua r cook trust me i know what i'm telling you ask him a question Show him a picture of your cards. He will get you the answer right away. He's really, really good about that. And if you have just any other questions, again, at Joshua R. Cook. Give him a follow on Twitter. Subscribe to Lockdown Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast. Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes. The list goes on and on. We have a YouTube now. We made the transition to YouTube. Go check it out. Just go on YouTube and search Lockdown Spurs. And there shows a plenty already. And uh, we thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first listen each and every day. The NBA playoffs are here, which means uh, the Locked On NBA teams that are still surviving the tournament. Uh, they have their shows going and they're cranking it out. You want to know what's going on with the Celtics, the Bulls, the Mavericks, the Grizzlies, whichever team that's still surviving. Uh, make sure to give them a follow and subscribe to them at the Locked On NBA Network. So for Josh Cook, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked On Spurs.